Clay, man, Reggie, we just appreciate you so much for always being ready, instant in season and out of season to pray. You know, prayer, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And this is a space where we come together to not only bring this positive development word, but to pray so that your prayers are joined with our prayers and collectively we can reach the throne of grace. But this morning, we've got several brothers that are uh, that are on uh, that are on here with us, uh, part of the administrative team, but they just have already spoken this month on this topic of confidence. You know, we're talking about the leading man and then us becoming the leading men in our relationships, the leading man in our in every vertical and aspect aspect of life that we deal with. We want to be the leading man, being led by the Lord. So this morning, the subtopic is confidence. Uh, don't you know, don't cast away your confidence. Uh, the confidence is um is just so so vital to what we're moving forward with. So what we're asking these brothers this morning, I prepared twenty questions, and each of them have already spoken and shared from their perspective of what it means to um to just to have um to have um. Uh, that confidence and how to wear that confidence. What, what, why confidence is so important as a husband, as a father, as a leader, and as a servant. And uh, so we're going to jump right into it. And uh, we're just going to, I'm going to throw the question out here. And, and all of you or any of you can answer the question. And the first one is this, as a leader, how do you balance confidence with, um, with being receptive to feedback and different perspectives? As a leader, how do you balance confidence with being receptive to feedback and different perspectives? We'll start off with you, Brother Sikola. Well, how you balance confidence is, first of all, having it. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you can't balance what you don't have. And one of the ways that you get and gain confidence, especially as, as a believer, is in the time that you spend with God, uh, you getting to understand and know him and knowing how he thinks and how he wants us to think and us to react, we can act in confidence that we are doing his will. In order for us to do his will, we have to know his will. So as far as balancing it, you know, with the feedback from different people, we have to measure what they give us with what God has told us and what God has showed us and what God has instructed us to do. Because if what they are giving us is, is, is in opposition or even if it's, if it's a variant or if it's off from what God has told us, well then we should have the confidence to address that, but do it in such a way to where it still shows that we have a relationship with God. I, I think sometimes we, we confuse confidence with ego and they are not the same. So we have to make sure that we are in ourselves balanced and then we can balance whatever situation we're in. Oh yeah, you, you gave the textbook answer. That's okay, that's okay. <laughs> uh, so um, Brother Wright, you, you, um, you haven't been wrong so far. So would you just kind of respond in kind to that question? <laughs> you know, can you guys hear me? Because I'm, I'm not Can you hear me? You can hear me now, yeah. Okay. Okay, for me, you know, I, I you know, just even stand the word confidence. Now you're kind of muscled. Okay, so come back to me. Come back okay. to me. Let me. All right. Uh, Dr. Dent, are you prepared to respond to that? Yeah, um, I, I just think, you know, I think one of the, one of the things I, I just piggyback off the whole uh, um, talk this week about confidence, I, I think sometimes. We don't want in, in the, the feedback, because I was thinking about the word, the uninvited feedback that people sometimes give us in, in, by ghosting us or not participating. Th that is also the feedback sometimes we receive from others. But I was thinking about um, how do you create this balance is the thought I had on yesterday is how much information about myself do I actually avoid? And, and so if I'm not gaining information about who I am and whose I am, 
I can lose confidence in that because I, I'm so busy trying to boost and encourage other people that I neglect myself. And I don't, I don't like the information that I'm getting about me. So I don't even welcome feedback. But the feedback most of us get is when we're alone, we're isolated. Because he, here's the thing, I'll give you Dr. Mack and everybody on the call. The secret places in your life is where the problems lie of your confidence or lack of. Mm -hmm. If you go to the look at the secret places that you hide or you keep, those are the areas where you find where you really, really struggle with confidence. And so that's just one of my thoughts. Ben, you all you often talk about how competence is so very important with confidence. But more importantly, you talk about that feedback. Feedback is something that you critique and feedback as opposed to criticism or condemnation. And people uh, confuse those, the two right there. So in response to that question, how can a leader balance confidence with being receptive to that feedback? Approach it from that standpoint. Well, good morning. First of all, uh, you're right. Uh, competence is married to confidence. Uh, and, and so that that's a whole process within itself. But being open to feedback uh, is something that has to be learned. And typically you have to come to a point where in, in for me, it was a spiritual moment. And sometimes mentors do it. Sometimes your wife do it. Sometimes you just have your come to Jesus moment that you determine that you have to get some feedback. You have to be open to changing the way you do some things uh, within your life. Um, I tell everybody, if, if you want to take a look at what's going on with your life, if things are not headed in the right direction, that you want it to be, then take a look at the philosophy that you apply to your life. To me, philosophy is all that you know and what you do with what you know. And if, if what you're doing uh, is not getting you where you want, then you're going to need somebody to give you some information to help redirect or maybe tweak your philosophy and uh, how you approach your life. And, and that's feedback. Now, the thing is, can you handle feedback or do you always look at feedback as criticism? And you show me somebody that that can't handle feedback, then I'm going to show you somebody that's really struggling within their life. They their whole quest at that point in their life is just to be right about something, you know, be right at the risk of destroying rape relationships, be right at the risk uh, of anything. They just I call it uh, the, the, the disease of being right and they'll be right at all risk. And so when you get to that point, that's when you have to really understand that uh, you need the feedback, you need you need that correction uh, to be able to take the step to the next level. Uh, so being able to have that perspective and feedback, being able to differentiate uh, uh, feedback from criticism is, is very, very important. I think Pastor Raphael always said, you know, criticism is, is, is about your feelings, you know, and, and it can't be about your feelings. It's really, uh, you have to be able to, take the feedback and for correction. So you said Me, sometimes, I, sometimes it's wrong to be right, Mr. Right. <laughs> well, I, I'll just like to jump in and piggyback on on what I'm just gonna give a hot example. I'm gonna be the I'm gonna be the example today. I'm gonna be the guinea pig on that portion. But I like to agree with what Benny has said. And he's so right. And you know one of the things I've you know, my wife and I, we've been in our marriage therapy or marriage counseling sessions. One of the things that we've been talking about and is exactly what we've been talking about right now today. And that's me. One of the things I've discovered is that I'm not a good listener. And so that's one of the things that after 29 years of marriage, or as my buddy would say, 29 years of marriage, that's something I have come to the discovery is that I am not a good listener. And I'll say this, dude, that is hard. That is hard to, but but I agree with what Benny has said to a lot. If, but if you're going to grow, if my marriage is going to get from being stuck in a certain area and go on to growth, you know, you've got to be able to be mature enough. And that's a sign of maturity. 
is to be mature enough to allow somebody to speak into your life about the things that they are seeing. Now, one of the issues that is, is difficult for my wife is she goes, hey, when I'm talking to you, I mean, your face is all turned and bent and, and out of shape. And so my response to her is that, hey, this ain't easy. So I've learned to listen with my face. I'm going to be honest with you. It's hard to take it. So I told her, I said, hey, we got to work on that part. I, I'm, I'm at the point now where I can listen. But that's a sign of being mature. And I agree with what Benny said. We've got to be mature enough to allow somebody to speak into us about the things that they see in our lives. Well, and that kind of brings us to the next question that I, I wanted uh, 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 Sadir to, uh, to address, is how can leaders maintain confidence during those times of uncertainty or adversity, things are coming against you, or you're not sure what's going on? How do you remain confident in that uh, if you're rejecting the feedback, if you're not allowing the process to, to take care of it? How do you remain confident in those times? I I just believe that every gentleman should have a board of directors. You mm. know, you you run yourself like a business. And so when you're not at ease, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. I shouldn't be, to be quite honest with you. I can add uh, some specifics to a very, uh, um, well, some insight in some very specific ways. But I do have people on my board that love me, that I trust. You know, I, I can be handled by a rigid tenor. Uh, Reggie Wright can get in my ear. Sacconi can add me feedback. Dr. Dent and you know Benny Franklin handles me in a, in a, in a, you know in a, a tough way, but but I know it's based and rooted in love. And so the confidence is there. I don't think you know the, based on the word, and we're all believers. We know that we are not perfect. We are getting perfected, but it can call, it can be at a point in your life where your your mistakes at that particular point can be critical. So we should defer to a wise counsel. If I'm feeling insecure in spaces or decision-making, bounce it across the board of directors. Hey, Dr. Dent, what do you think about this? I'm thinking about going here. Hey, Sacconi, what do you think what was happening here? Big Brother Ridge, what, you, what do you think? And you get that and you can be steered. There is nothing new under the sun, right? And I look to my OGs to help me um, navigate some spaces that I might not have navigated before. And then even in my fear, I can have confidence that the God has surrounded me with a um, uh, support system that will take me to the levels that he wants me to go to. And I got to be open to it. I got, you know, mm -hmm. again, I'm open to it. If I know one of the, the, the common threads throughout all the conversation is love, I'm good. You know, I know that these men love me. So why would they say something different? And I can I can handle that. I can digest that a little bit better. Because there's a difference between condemnation and critique, between criticism well, and critique. Yeah, yeah. And, Cri and, 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 criticism and critique, there's a difference. Criticism is, is rooted in negativity without uh, resolution. A critique is giving you advice to get you to a better place. And some people do that. They they look for the opportunity to step on your neck when you're down. And but that's not the people that I, I surround you myself surround with. Surround yourself with. That's good. That's good. Good. Uh Dr. Dent, I mean that kind of opens this uh, this whole point up right there. Because that's a little bit raw what he's saying, but it's real. So the, this question says, what role does self-care play in building and maintaining confidence as a husband, father, leader, or servant? Well, so well, I, I jump, I jump right into that because that's that's one of the things I I do with this group that I work with, like self care from a biblical perspective. But I I think one of the things that I really think about is listen to Derek and everybody else. I, I'm trying to help people not to be codependent, and when you are codependent, you have all these signs and symptoms that you are. You, you got to be somebody's hero, you got to be the rescue, you got to always fix it and things of this nature. And so I'm dealing with some clients now that are codependent. And so I got this one situation 
that I think would really help Dr. Mack is when we really, really dig deeper and stop trying to avoid to, and to getting to know ourselves at the same time and being able to say, okay, what is my self-care? Because everybody who I found out who are codependent came from alcoholic families, drug addiction families and things of this nature, and they don't take care of themselves. So I had one situation, the husband left. So I just asked this one particular wife, just focus on herself, just build your self-care, take good care of yourself. At the same time, she became so healthy that she was no longer codependent. And so, so I asked her like different, what information do I avoid in knowing myself, getting to know me? Because how can the scripture be correct? Love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if I'm not taking care of me, I'm really violating that scripture because it reflects in relationships. And so, so I asked, I even challenged my daughters with this question, Dr. Mac, and it was amazing that you asked me this question. So I asked her, how much time and energy do you spend in getting to know yourself, know your personality, your behaviors, your beliefs, your values, your attitude, your interests, your habits, your thoughts, and the triggers that trigger certain thoughts. You know, are you trying to avoid this? Because you know, we're good at avoiding taking care of ourselves. Let, let me just, let me read this one quote and then I'll be finished. And I thought it was quite interesting that uh, just to read this quote to you guys. And, and um, it, it, is, it, is, it is absolutely so necessary for us to be able to enter the dark tunnels of our own life and deal with our own self-care because you're not taking care of yourself. It is not easy. It is not easy to find happiness in ourselves, and it's and it is not possible to find it elsewhere. If mm. you can't find it within yourself, how is possible you can find it somewhere else? And if we don't take care of ourselves first and foremost, how do you become better for everybody else around you? Because now you are stressed out, strained, and struggling. You're overwhelmed by things because you haven't spent enough time just taking care of you. So I don't call it being selfishness, because it's not selfishness, it's self-care. How do you take care of yourself? First and foremost, before you try to take care of everybody else. And that's that codependency attitude. Let me take care of everybody else before I take care of myself. Well, that leads us to, um, now we've got a, a, a gentleman that's on our, our screen right now, that wasn't really planned to be in the um, in the discussion, but I want his opinion on this. And this is a question that says this, uh, for you, Reggie Tenney. <laughs> As a servant, how do you balance humility and confidence in your service to others? Now, what we, we, we're talking about self-care right there, and that self-care, sometimes we, we get into this humility is making yourself feel like you're smaller and that you're demure. No, humility is strength if it's operated properly. So how do you balance that humility with confidence in your service to others? You asked the right person. Well, you know what, <laughs> Johnny? Yes, sir. I, um, just like what um, Dr. Dent was just saying about self-care, that, that's important to me. But I'm going to tell you what I say to me every day and everybody that knows me really the closeness. My favorite saying, if there's no enemy within, the enemy on the outside can do you no harm. Mm -hmm. I, I use that all the time. I just That's what I build in my spirit, man. And I know that, hey, I'm going to be facing some challenges. Yeah, that's just part of it. But the bottom line, when it boils down to what we're talking about, about confidence, faith, that's what faith is all about, is confidence. Mm. That's what it is. Faith is confidence. And we have to be able to have that. And me being a servant, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't take that for granted, you know, because I know that what God has placed the role he placed me in. But um, I'm grateful for that. But I just, you know, just want to lead. And as the Bible says, let all light shine that others sees Christ in us. You know, when I say about doing what we're supposed to do, I, it, it constantly, people on my job constantly ask me about that. How do, you, how do you stay rooted? How do you stay grounded all the time? You seem like you're always up. You got so much energy and everything like that. It's just confidence, man. And it's just knowing that I'm, 
who I am, you know, and I just try to make sure I just kind of live that life, man, that that's what, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's what I want to be able to do, but it's not easy. It's not an easy task, but you just have to just have that confidence knowing that God is with you. As we say, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. I live by that, man. And that's just, that's just how, you know, that's just how I operate each and every day. I try to do that. And uh, it's nobody but the grace of God. So uh, I know that's triggered a whole lot of conversation in everybody, but we're, 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 we're toward the end. So this is what I want uh, each of us to do. Take a one minute recap of the whole month or what you have just been was dropped in your spirit and just one minute, 60 seconds, and just kind of recap and share from that confidence perspective what you want men to know in order to be able to move forward expeditiously. And we're starting with you, brothers, uh, Brother Prince, since this confidence piece and topic was uh, stemmed from you. It was a labor that was, uh, it was something laid on me by God, and I know that it's, it doesn't stop right here. But in my 60 seconds, or should I say 50 seconds now, uh, confidence is not just about you. It's about the people that you've been called to serve because they need to see that. You you need to demonstrate that, your confidence. And even like what Brother Reggie just you know said, that people are looking at him and they're questioning him, like, how do you have so much confidence? So confidence is not, it's not meant to be hid. It's meant to be put on display. But again, not for our ego, but for the glory of God so that people can see that because of our relationship with God, we have confidence and they can do the same thing. They can have that same level of confidence if they spend time with God. I'll jump in. Is there, I think um, confidence is a byproduct of identity. When you know who you are, when you know your purpose, when you uh, are flowing in your passion and you, you, a byproduct of that is that you flow in your unique space. It's your identity within God. There is I, I'm not supposed to be anybody but Sideric, period. And there's a unique uh, qualifications for me and a call for me. And when I flow in it, when I find that niche, when I find that space in God, man, I'm, you know, I'm out of there and I'm good. And I'm good. And I know who I ain't. Who's better? You know, I know who I am in God. And I know who I ain't. Y'all catch the English on that later. <laughs> I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in and piggyback off Sideric because Sideric, actually, you said that as one of your points in your message that, man, that has really resonated with me. And it's something that I've discovered in my marriage therapy and counseling sessions. Knowing who you are, one of the most difficult things of why we don't do it, because we got to deal with the ugly stuff in us, the hard stuff that is within us. But that's going to be the main thing that if we can ever get a hold to it and find out who we are, man, that's just going to propel us forward. So, um, so Derek, I thank you for leaning in on that point and bringing us back to that point today, because I agree with you. I think that is so key to a man going on into his destiny. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. I think it, it Derek, that was good. That uh, resonated with, with me as well. Uh, and, and, you know, Johnny, I, I like when you brought up, you know, how do we differentiate uh, and understand how to take the right feedback? Uh, I think one is part of being competent is 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 getting input for information and just growing through people. Because, because when God expands you out, he's going to do it through people. It's not going to be any Houdini moments. He's going to bring people into your life that's going to bless you and open doors for you and understand you. My prayer is simple. It's just, Lord, give me the discernment to know when you are speaking to me through others. That's really, I think that's really what all our prayer should be, uh, to have that discernment, to know when he's speaking to me through other people. I want to leave, that's, that's the prayer I wanted to give to, to, to everybody today. Well, I, I'll just, come behind and, and I'll say this, Dr. Mack and everybody, uh, my biggest thing is um, avoiding confusion when it comes to confidence, because the key thing is Satan knows if I can confuse you, I can take away your confidence. I can go back to the garden of Eden. The only thing I had to do to Eve was confuse her. And I, that's all I had to do, but put in circumstance, situation, conditions, or even people in our lives, just if I can confuse you, I can take away your confidence. And so when the Bible say cast it not away, that means you can get rid of it. And as Reggie said, was talking about my faith, 
you know, I can't, I, I got to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. I got to continue to have the trust in God in every situation I'm in, because if not, when confusion set in, I lose confidence. I mean, and I can tell you this, playing whether, whether or not I was on a judo mat, whether I was playing golf or whether any sports I was participating in, if I was confused about, can I make this throw? Can I tap? Can I do this? Can I make this putt? Can I do anything? If there's any confusion there, I lost confidence. And, and Satan knows the key weapon is I don't have to come with a pitchfork or horn and all this other stuff. I'll just cast a seed of confusion because the Bible said God is not the opt of confusion. If I could just put confusion in you, I can take away your confidence. Yeah, that's good. That's if true. you say, if you, if, if you say, if you are who you, they say you are, you know, everything Jesus Christ was always challenged in his identity. And so you got to know who you are, you know. That's good. That's what it is, man. Yep. Well, guys, um, and I, I want to piggyback off of everything that everybody said. And I think that uh, ultimately the message that, that I gave was cast not away your confidence from Hebrews 10 uh, and 35. And we often cast that confidence away, operating in uh, the imposter syndrome allowing the enemy to, to, to just talk that noise to us and making us feel like we're not good enough or, or we don't deserve it or somebody else is better or we haven't yeah. arrived yet. So I think that the, the thing that God is telling us is cast not away your confidence because that confidence is how we have to come to the throne of grace. Yes. That confidence is what allows us to be able to stand up. And the pneuma man, that inside man, mm -hmm. allows it to stand up within us and march toward. Everything, every time you look in the Bible, when there's something that required uh, something supernatural, it required the confidence in the individuals to be built built first. He said that, that uh, no miracles could be made because of their lack of faith. But it was their lack of confidence that God would do what he said he was going to do. And so I think that this message, again, thank you, uh, Tony, because this message of confidence to men as we move forward, as we, as we try to be husbands, fathers, leaders, and servants in our communities, homes, or anywhere, we have to have confidence in order to be able to pull it off. So, brothers, I thank you for this, um, for this message, for this whole topic this month on Thursday, we're going to have Dr. Brad that's going to just close us out. It's been a remarkable, incredible month, and I thank you for your input. Um, that being said, uh, Brother uh, uh, Sadiq, would you pray us out? Hey, hey, Dr. Mack, one thing before we close out for the month of July is Mental Health Minority Mental Health Month. So oh, my Lord. It's in, July is Minority Mental Health Month, so I just want everybody to be aware of that. All right. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold. We're going to have... Uh, Brother Tobit, just to pray us out since he's been, since he's been sitting there quietly and patiently. Good morning, my brother. Uh, thank you all for all of the uh, the in, uh, valuable information about uh, confidence, uh, which uh, creates a platform for not only us to continue to grow, but those that have uh, chimed in uh, to get some nurturing and uh, nutrients that they need in order to grow their confidence as well. So I thank you brothers for uh, the information, uh, for transformation this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come as humble as we know how. Thank you for uh, yet another opportunity, Father, to uh, share what thus said the Lord. Father God, thank you uh, for this panel discussion on confidence, understanding what, what it looks like, uh, Father, understanding that we were not born but Father, with confidence, Father God, but confidence was developed over time. Father God, thank you, Father, for uh, scriptures, Father God, that teach us how to be uh, confident in the spirit, Father God, that teach us how to be confident in the natural, Father. Your word says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Father God, that's confidence. Your word says that faith without works is dead. That's confidence. Your word says, look to the hills from which cometh our help. Understanding that all of our help comes from you, Lord, that's confidence. Thank yes. you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for opening not just our eyes, Father God, but, but, but starting from the inside, Father God, working on our hearts, Father God, and our spirit to give us that understanding and that uh, a dialect, Father God, the spiritual dialect, Father God, to 
become better and to become more confident. Father God, thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We dare not take it for granted. Father God, we will always put you first, Father God. So we thank you. We love you. We honor you. This is our prayer in your darling son's name. Amen.